Thanks for joining. Uh, I know it's late in the afternoon, uh, so I really appreciate everybody being able to join me. Uh, so today, today we're going to talk about you know, what successful innovation in data looks like. So a little bit about me. So my name's Jay Benedetti. Uh, I work at Clover DX uh, as the Global Solutions Director. Uh, I've been with Clover for four years now uh, in a number of capacities. So I started out with them as a consultant, uh, delivering projects. Uh, then I quickly transitioned to becoming a, a project manager uh, and overseeing the, the technical delivery uh, in our U.S. team. Uh, and, and now I manage the commercial delivery uh, globally for our company. Uh, so I've had the experience and exposure to a number of our customers uh, and a number of our solutions that we've helped to build for those customers. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll get a lot out of this uh, talk today uh, and you can learn some things and, and take some things back with you guys. Um, so what I really want to talk about today is uh, more around uh, data challenges and solutions. Um, but, but with those data challenges and solutions, there comes a number of pitfalls. Uh, so the pitfalls are really the things that could uh, make your projects fail. Uh, and those are the things you want to avoid, obviously, because you want successful projects, right? Um, there's you know, a number of challenges out there. Um, so who's, who's been involved, just by a show of your hands, with a project where you're integrating data between applications, databases, uh, any other systems, maybe now or in the future. All right, good number. Uh, how about migrating data from databases to like the cloud to uh, applications? Number of hands? Good. You guys are in the right place. Um, so really what I want to kind of get into um, is, is the pitfalls that you know, we've seen over the years um, and, and some things that we've had to overcome uh, in order to deliver successful projects. Uh, so, so the first one is uh, making the project too large. So if you make the project a little too large, one, it's difficult to sell internally. Uh, so if you're you know, more of a business user, you have to sell that internally to your you know, boss and their boss maybe or even like the C-levels uh, for actually getting the project off the ground. So if you come in with a scope that's too large, they might say, well, it costs too much money, or it's going to take you too long to implement. Uh, and then from a technical level, if it's too large, it becomes very difficult to actually deliver the thing. And it becomes very difficult to understand what you're delivering. Um, so it's really important to uh, you know, keep the project uh, in some manageable form or some manageable scale. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is not defining the scope correctly. Uh, so, you know, you define the project up front, you think you have some agreement between, you know, the technical users and the business users about what you're going to be delivering. And then the next thing you know, you know, the business users had some completely different idea of what you're supposed to be delivering at the end of the project. So once you actually get to the delivery of it, it seems kind of pointless. So you want to make sure that everybody's kind of aligned uh, and things don't change as the business is growing. Because, uh, you know, things change in business, right? And, you know, as, as things change, you want to make sure that your project is set up so you can adapt to those changes. Uh, and then the next pitfall is uh, if your project lacks a champion or a direction. So, you know, in today's world, everybody kind of changes jobs. Uh, everybody moves around in their organization. Uh, but projects still have to go on. So how do you understand and how do you move that project forward if you lose that really that champion or that leader of the project internally? It's very difficult to overcome that because either you know, from the higher level, somebody has to take responsibility for that project and then you know, move that project to delivery or that project will die because it's not as important to the business to deliver. Uh, so the, the next thing is you know, definition of success. So this is kind of around the champion piece, right? So if you define success a little bit uh, differently from a technical point of view or the business point of view, then that, that perception of what's being delivered and the perception of success being delivered uh, is a little bit different and it might not be as successful as you think. Uh, and then the final thing is you know, selecting the wrong tools and partners to help you. Um, whether that's somebody that's giving you advice on, you know, a methodology of how to accomplish something, whether that's selecting a tool, whether that's going more the open source route or the custom coding route, 
uh, you want to make sure that you're selecting the right you know, tool for the, the challenge that you're accepting. So you know, now that I've kind of outlined the, the different pitfalls of what we've seen in projects, what I want to talk now about is some of the solutions that we've helped to build for our customers uh, and you know, where those pitfalls kind of pop up. And um, hopefully, you'll, you'll get a lot out of you know, what we, we were able to accomplish for our customers um, from an innovation and data standpoint. So I just want to give you a little bit of a high level from like, the business concept of, of who this company is, uh, just so you get like, an understanding of what the problem is. So the company is a, a global reinsurance company. Uh, they sell direct to consumers. They also sell direct to businesses. So they have a platform that they sell to businesses where they'll have consumers then purchase uh, insurance from them. So they essentially are a third party as well as direct to consumer. Uh, so they offer a platform to the, to the customer uh, to go in and sign up for insurance. Uh, you know, you have different applications, you have different, you know, quotes that go out to them, and then eventually they might, you know, agree to sign up for insurance with you guys. Uh, so with that, you have to ingest all the data that, you know, essentially is being produced from the application. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like their main point of view is how do they ingest the data, right? Um, and then from there, um, what they have already done, so just from a technical point of view, they had already uh, migrated to cloud, so they were already in Azure. Um, they had initially started to um, develop all the scripts and, and uh, custom development from the ground up, so that was already in place for them. So they already had an existing solution working, so what was the problem? So they had a number of problems. One was they couldn't scale the solution. So they might have selected the wrong tool. Uh, they might have had the wrong strategy. Um, and then from there, um, they were actually adding another platform, uh, which was a little bit more modern. So the new platform was going to be based off of uh, Cosmos DB. And their strategy was to use Azure services um, for essentially most of you know, their, their infrastructure. Um, which was different than their approach initially, where they were just going to use Azure infrastructure for like, you know, the instances and, and compute. So they kind of had changed their strategy from a business perspective, uh, which obviously changes the strategy from a data perspective uh, in order to deliver successfully and you know, keep the business growing and moving forward and scaling. Um, so, so with that, um, you know, we were able to help them to uh, I guess, prioritize the strategy and how to deliver this thing. Um, so the first thing we were able to do with, with them uh, was to automate their entire uh, DevOps and deployment uh, strategy in Azure. So using, using Azure DevOps, you can, you can see here where it's pretty much uh, across all environments between dev, uh, QA, UAT, and production. So what we actually were able to do was automate the deployment of uh, the infrastructure, uh, all the databases, all the file shares, uh, even the firewall rules and, and disk encryption, pretty much everything across the, the uh, enterprise uh, with you know, an easy to scale and, and click, uh, essentially, script. So they're able to use that script you know, throughout the enterprise uh, to easily deploy the environment whenever they need. Um, so that, that helps with one uh, scalability. So as they grow, now they have this automated deployment procedure that they're able to just automatically scale if they need to from a business perspective. So, you know, for example, with, with Clover, they've got a, a one server right now, and they can easily scale that to, to multiple servers um, just with, you know, within one minute. Um, so they, they will get to that, and, uh, you know, this was the first piece, essentially, of their strategy in delivering was automating all of the deployments. Uh, and then the, the piece in there between the environments, which is automated, is the code deployment. So the code deployment between the development cycles, UAT, QA, and production cycles uh, is all automated in the Azure DevOps workflows as well, so that once code is you know, iterated upon and changed, uh, or potentially added as the business grows, they're able to quickly scale and, 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 and deploy that into uh, the new environment for testing, uh, or for the production environment. Uh, the, next, the next project that I want to talk about, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of a high-level business case. Uh, it's a 
global logistics company um, where they were um, you know, very segmented in their business. Uh, they had you know, a, a development team which managed all the uh, APIs that the business was essentially using uh, and billing against. Uh, so what, what they did was essentially they're, they're billing uh, customers for using like, their taxes and tariffs uh, and um, you know, shipping packages. So people are hitting those, those APIs and you have to charge a, an amount for those. So that was very segmented from how they're actually invoicing uh, and keeping track of that. So one is IT, one is you know, the accounting team. Um, so what we were able to do was, uh, again, with, with Azure, um, and we uh, also selected uh, to work with MongoDB with them, uh, we were able to build an enterprise warehouse um, so we built it from the ground up, we architected it, uh, and then we uh, delivered on it. So essentially what, what the warehouse does is uh, it will load all of the uh, automated, well, it will load all the, it will load all of the data from the production uh, systems from all the APIs that are executed, uh, and then it will um, be loaded into the warehouse for uh, automated uh, reporting and also ACH output. So we were able to automate the process of you know, full ACH um, for, for them, uh, and as well as you know, setting up different data marts for them from the warehouse. So this has been kind of set up to scale from like an enterprise perspective because the warehouse, uh, since it's a NoSQL structure, um, the business can change. So, and since there's actually not a structure there, you can change the warehouse pretty easily and frequently. Um, and then the, the data marts can be rebuilt from scratch, you know, every day if that was a need for the business. Um, so, <clears throat> so what I want to talk about there though is uh, the, the strategy really um, going forward and where some of the pitfalls might have come in for them. Um, so for this project essentially, there was three main pieces that needed to, to be selected in order to get this project to delivery. Uh, the first one being uh, the, the cloud strategy. So they were very much focused on you know, on-prem. Um, and the first hurdle there to, to climb was uh, really to change the mindset of the internal stakeholders to go to cloud uh, within this part of the business. Uh, so that was like the first major hurdle to, to tackle. The second major hurdle was really to understand it and process the data. So from a, like an automation standpoint, how do you ingest the data automatically without having to go into uh, like Excel and start working on invoices to get them out you know, every, every, every month or every week. Uh, so that was the second piece, and that was the data strategy and integration piece uh, where Clover was able to come in and help them. Uh, and then the, the last piece was really the storage piece, which was MongoDB. Uh, and that was the other piece that uh, you know, took a little bit of time uh, to get in place. And um, so that kind of, uh, I would say, delayed it a little bit um, but from like the end to end, if you had all of the pieces in place for the project, I would say it should have taken no, no more than six months to deliver. Uh, but because the strategy wasn't as clearly defined, uh, and things were kind of segmented of getting one thing done after the other, uh, it took you know, three years. So that is definitely a pitfall that you want to keep in mind and make sure that you know, any dependencies that uh, you guys have or foresee uh, are taken care of you know, up front. Uh, and so the, the last use case that I really want to talk about was a uh, very interesting use case. Um, so we're talking about a uh, large, large corporation uh, looking to, to complete a migration. Uh, so it's not a small migration. We're talking about you know, 800 terabytes of data. Um, some of it is structured data, some of it is unstructured data. Uh, so it's on-premise data, and uh, they want to migrate it to the cloud. So there's a number of things that are <laughs> challenging with this use case. Um, so I guess let's, let's talk a little bit about the strategy of how uh, they are going to accomplish this. So the strategy, is, number one, is to decide you know, what, what their strategy is to cloud. Are they going to Azure? Are they going to AWS? Are they going to Google? Uh, they decided AWS. Fair, good, all right. Uh, next strategy for them to, to determine was their data strategy. How were they going to actually 
manage moving 800 terabytes of data from, on -premise, from an on-premise database to a cloud database. Can you do that manually? Hopefully not. That would be rough. Um, can you just do it with a tool? Could. Probably not. Can you do it with a tool plus uh, a strategy for delivering with that tool? Potentially still. <laughs> so it kind of, at this point, still not sure you're going to be successful, right? <laughs> uh, so you know, we, were, we were able to come in and help them to essentially develop the strategy of how we would do it, uh, and then you know, help them along the way with uh, identifying where there might be some key challenges as they're delivering or trying to deliver in this iteration. Um, so you know, how do you extract from the database for 800 terabytes? How do you move it across the network? Is your network fast enough? Do you uh, have enough network speed to you know, make it happen within like a month? Uh, you know, that's just you know, raw numbers of how to move data from one point to another. That doesn't even have to do with a, a tool or a strategy or anything. There's, a, there's literally a, a network and there's a capability there, right? So you add a tool on top of that and it might add a little bit of overhead. So you need to make sure that every piece that you're developing is really optimized for that migration. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to, to make sure that you can complete the migration within a, within a period of time. Um, so some things that you know, we were playing around with as we were thinking about this use case. Um, you know, once the data lands in AWS, uh, how do you validate you know, that it actually got there? Because uh, we're talking about you know, images as well. So how do you validate they didn't get corrupted in the transfer from on-prem to, to the cloud? You really have to understand you know, what you're doing in order to uh, deliver on it successfully. Uh, and this is pretty sensitive data, so we, we, you can't make a mistake with it, um, or there's going to be some, some challenges on the business level. Um, so you know, that's, that's kind of, a, I would say, a, a scalability problem, right? So uh, that's, that's kind of one of the pitfalls that this project is going to be susceptible to. Uh, and, you know, it's definitely a, a challenge for, to overcome. So what I want to kind of wrap up here with was the, the pitfalls that, you know, I, I previously mentioned. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, scaling the thing. We talked about uh, champions of, of the projects, champions of the, the strategies. Uh, we talked about the scope of the strategy. We talked about uh, if it's too large. Uh, and those are just some things that you need to watch out for uh, when, you're, when you're delivering projects, you're thinking about projects, uh, you're thinking about changing just your data environment uh, as you're integrating, as you're migrating, uh, and as you're moving data. Um, you know, the world's changing quickly in technology and, and in data, uh, and, and everybody sees it, right? So, uh, you know, happy to, to field any questions, and um, I guess thanks for attending. Sure. Uh -huh. of um, information across. Are you then going to construct a system that you think is best to put that data, or are you literally copying the system and, and workflow structures that they have already set yep. in their kind of like location-based storage, yep. and you're just copying across to the yep. cloud, or are you going to construct something that's even better and smarter and, yep. and stuff that can set so it's yep. going to work a little better? Yep, okay. So the, the question is uh, in, let me just give you the visual. So in this use case, are we, are we actually just migrating one-to-one -one across from on-prem to cloud? Uh, and so the answer is we're actually splitting the data. So in, in the data sets, there's structured data, which is in the Oracle database, and there's also blob data, which is images. So we're essentially splitting that. So the images are going to S3 buckets. Uh, and then we're taking the response of the S3 buckets, so essentially the location of them, and then we're storing that in the, in the database with the rest of the relational data. Uh, in addition to just the relational data that's moved into, into the cloud, there's also a number of transformations, deduplications, validations, uh, anything you might think in transformations with data, that's still happening as it's being migrated. Because you know, that data has been there for you know, probably 20 years, so the, the business has changed, uh, the needs of that data has changed, and you want to kind of scrub it as you, you load it to the cloud, because well, you're, you're still paying for cloud storage, so you want to make sure everything that lands there is, is still valid. All right, does anybody else have any other questions? Hope that answered your question. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for me?
Uh, no? If not, uh, you can come see me over, over at our booth, and uh, thank you for attending. <laughs>